I'm moving this computer from room number one to room number two. There's going to be a problem, a big problem. So this is kind of an old computer. It doesn't have a wireless adapter and it was connected to internet the simplest way possible. Just directly with an ethernet cable to the wireless router which happened to be in the same room as the computer. Basically, that means if I want to have internet in room number two, I will either have to run a long ethernet cable or buy a wireless adapter. Hmm. I don't want to do either of those. Instead, I'm going to use the old Linksys wireless router I have and set it up as a repeater bridge. So what's a repeater bridge? It actually consists of two things. First, a wireless bridge. A wireless bridge connects two LAN segments with a wireless link. In my case, I will connect my PC to one of the LAN interfaces of the secondary router in room number two, and secondary router will connect wirelessly to the main router in room number one and form a wireless bridge. This way, my computer can have internet connection. As for the repeater, the secondary router is going to rebroadcast the current wireless network so it can cover more areas. This is actually a good solution to extend the wireless network without running any cables. So because the stock firmware on the Linksys router doesn't give me this feature, I have installed DDWRT instead, which is a third-party firmware and is designed to replace the manufacturer firmware and it offers more features. And in case you're wondering how you can install DDWRT, I actually have another video on that subject that shows how you can do that. Feel free to check that out before continuing here. So let's get started. First of all, we're not going to make any changes on the primary wireless router. We're going to leave it as is. Whatever we do is going to be on the secondary router. And I'm going to start off with doing a hard reset just to make sure there are no pre-existing configurations on the router. Make sure the unit is powered on, but there are no wireless or wired clients connected. Press and hold down the reset button for 30 seconds. Then without releasing the reset button, unplug the power and hold down the reset button for another 30 seconds. Plug the unit back in, still holding down the reset button for a final 30 seconds. Next, we will connect our computer with an Ethernet cable to one of the LAN interfaces of the secondary router. So at this point, the computer must have received an IP address from the router. I can check that if I go to the command prompt by typing CMD in the Windows search box and click on command prompt. Then I need to type IP config, enter, and as you can see, this is my IP address. And this is my default gateway, which is the IP address of the router. So let's have a look at the network diagram one more time. At this point, the primary and secondary routers are not connected to each other. They happen to have the same IP address of 192.168.1.1. The PC is directly connected to one of the LAN interfaces of the secondary router and has received an IP address of 192.168.1.115 from the DHCP server on the secondary router. As soon as we configure the wireless bridge between the primary and secondary router, there's going to be an IP conflict because they have the same IP address. So before that, we will have to change the secondary router's IP address to something else. I'm going to change it to 192.168.1.2, which should work fine. After we successfully configure the wireless bridge, the primary router is going to be the DHCP server and the secondary router is going to be in the breach mode and no longer providing any IP addresses. Now we can open a browser and go to 192.168.1.1 and the very first thing we need to do when we log into a fresh DDWRT router is to create a username and a password. So I just go ahead and do that. Next thing I'm going to do is to run a continuous ping to 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8, which is the Google's public DNS address. 
If the pings are successful, that means the internet is up and running. If they're not, like right now, means there's no internet. Now I need to go under wireless tab and then basic settings. I'll change the wireless mode from AP to repeater bridge. Then I'm going to save the page. I'm not going to click on apply settings yet. Wireless network mode should match your current wireless network. Mine is 802.11n, so I'm going to choose n only. Mix mode should also work, but since I know mine is n only, I'm going to go for that. Wireless network name or SSID should also be exactly the same as your current SSID. In my case, it is room 1. It is also case sensitive. Now I go under wireless security. Make sure everything you choose here matches your current wireless security settings. In my case, the security mode is WPA2 personal. WPA algorithm is AES. And WPA shared key is basically the password you use for your Wi-Fi. Next, I go under Security tab, then Firewall. Here, I uncheck everything except filter multicast. Then, I will disable the SPI Firewall. Now I go under setup and basic setup. This is where I can change the IP address of the DDWRT router. I'm going to change that to 192.168.1.2. Subnet mask will remain the same. Gateway and local DNS is going to be the IP address of the primary router. In my case, it's going to be 192.168.1.1. Then I'll do a final save and then click on apply settings. This will actually push the configuration to the router. At this point, we're done. I just need to cross my fingers and wait for about one minute to see if I get successful pings or not. Yes, and as expected, we finally got the successful pings. That means the internet connection is up and running. I can double check if I just open a website just to make sure everything is working fine. Okay, so at this point, the wireless bridge is up and running. The PC has internet connection. But the secondary router is not broadcasting any SSIDs. It is only the LAN interfaces that have internet connection. What we're going to do next is to configure the secondary router to broadcast an SSID called Room 2. So this way the wireless devices connected to the router can also get internet connection. And this feature is basically called a repeater or a range extender. So under wireless and basic settings, I'm going to add a virtual interface. Then I change the SSID name to room 2 and I make sure the wireless SSID broadcast is enabled. So now if I go under wireless security, I see the security mode for room 2 is disabled. I'm going to change that to WPA2 personal and I'll use AES for the WPA algorithm. I'm also using the same password as room 1, but the password can also be different. So now if I save the page and then click on apply settings, after a couple of minutes the secondary router should start broadcasting the new SSID. Okay, so now I switch to my laptop to test the connectivity to the new SSID we just created. And I also have the continuous ping to Google going in the background. Okay, as you can see, room 2 SSID is here. I just go ahead and try to connect.
and the pings are successful and that's a good sign. I'm just going to double check the connectivity by opening a browser and going to Google. All right, mission accomplished. My desktop and my laptop in room 2 are both connected to internet. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and feel free to share it and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much and I see you next time.